Nicole Digger says, I don't know yet, Jones. And this is actually our first interview here at the YWCA Lower Cape Fear in Wilmington, North Carolina, also known as the Port City. And we have the honor of interviewing Ms. Susan Fennell, who is actually the CEO. So she's going to give us some great tips, and it's going to be a great interview. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm excited to be here. So for the first question, I'd just like to know if you don't mind, can you tell us just a little bit about your background? Well, I've been working with the YWCA for almost 25 years now. So um, I, I started at the YWCA in Greenville, South Carolina as uh, a swim instructor and lifeguard. Uh, I saw a read in the paper that they had an opening for the aquatics director and I thought if I could get my foot in the door as a very young woman, uh, just out of college, I could probably get that job pretty quickly. So uh, that's what I did. So uh, I started there and um, I knew in high school and going to college that I wanted to um, be where people decided to be healthy, not as a teacher of physical education where you have to take uh, classes. So I did the leisure services track back then, um, and I'm actually a, you know, a graduate of Winthrop College in uh, physical education recreation track or leisure services. So um, I'm doing what I went to college for, and, um, and so it's, it's been a real blessing for me because I grew up and my career grew through the YWCA, so I'm like a product of mm -hmm. empowerment. So I started as a swim instructor, lifeguard, got the aquatics director position, director of facilities and operation, and then actually was asked by another board of directors in another state to come and apply for the executive director position when I was 34 years old. That's amazing. Yeah, so I'm just uh, one of those things that uh, happens when the YWCA gets a hold of you. <laughs> yes. So, since you did give us kind of your upbringing and how you did get it, the positions at the YWCA, what does really being the CEO entail? Because a lot of people say they want to be the CEO, but I don't think they know how much work goes into it. That's right. I think the, the misconception out there is that when you get to a position at this level that you just get to go to meetings and make decisions and, um, and that type of thing, where it, it really isn't just that. It's connecting the dots. It's saying that, gosh, we need to grow and how do we grow and a lot of um, thought and vision. And you can have all that, you can say let's do that, but then you have to bring the people together and actually have the folks um, to do the action steps. So I think um, what happens a lot of times with CEOs, especially with nonprofits, is they see something very different. Um, like when I moved here um, for this YWCA, it's my fourth and hopefully my last, and I sold on Wilmington, so I love it here. But um, And I think I worked every night and every weekend for the first three months just because it needed to be turned around. I knew what it's gonna take. I had done this before in High Point, North Carolina. And I think that um, it's rare to find that in a leader because like I said, most folks want to go to meetings, go to lunches mm -hmm. and um, that type of thing and make decisions, but it, it does take a lot in, initially, um, especially when an organization is sort of upside down um, in financial ways. So I know that a lot of us have seen on the news like the current events about the Black Lives Matter movement and the recent racial shootings. So in the face of dive and adversity, what really keeps you motivated and inspired? Um, you know, the YWCA has been doing this work for 158 years in this country and 102 years in Wilmington. And I can tell you that it's been disheartening to say the least. Um, but um, we know this work is out there and we have to keep keep on keeping on mm -hmm. and um, What's hard is for people to understand What racism is and how they absolutely can can affect it and change it and be more aware and mindful of How they're living their life and it's up to us to help people recognize that in a way that's comfortable not in a way that's confrontational mm -hmm. but in a way that that it, it, it creates dialogue that is helpful uh, and empowering and empathetic. Um, I think it's just, it's really hard and, and my thing with my staff and with us here is that be careful to make decisions about things and people before you know their story, okay? Everybody is fighting a battle that you don't know about 
everybody has their story. But once you kind of open that common ground to hear where they're coming from and what their story is, um, and so even as a leader of a, a, a nonprofit for this long that uh, is about racism and empowering women, I mean, I'm white, you know, and what people would add to that list of things may not be somebody they feel like as a leader, but they don't know my story. They don't know what um, drives me and what my passion is. So I think that's that's what we try to seek and what we're also trying to to help folks understand is it's okay to feel some of the way you feel. Um, you were uh, brought up in a society that for somehow we've gotten so off track with being human and that's really what it boils down to is that we're all the same. Um, and it's hard to see that when our society kind of perpetuates um, the things that they do at times. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. So with that being said, what are some of the events that the YWCA puts on to kind of help eliminate racism and shed some light on that it is still a current problem because some people don't think that racism still exists. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know that anybody would say that right now, but <laughs> especially in the light of the last uh, two or three weeks. Um, we have several events throughout the year. Um, our one coming up is our Potluck for Peace, which is sort of uh, a manifestation of our stand against racism. And our community outreach committee decided they wanted to continue the discussion and continue to bring people together to talk about race and talk about um, our community and how it, um, it needs to work on this particular issue. So Stand Against Racism is in April every year. That's a national YWCA recognized um, event. And there's hundreds of thousands of people who participate in that. This year we had a very successful event. So after that we started having potlucks for peace. Um, and we have another one this Thursday, the 21st. Um, and then we also do a, a Week Without Violence. Um, and that's in October, and that's any type of violent crime or, or families that are victims of violence. So um, we, we talk, last year we talked about anti-bullying. We have an event this Sunday that's gonna raise money for that particular event at the Lazy Pirate. Um, and it's an anti-bullying um, discrimination campaign where we'll have reggae music and giveaways and raffles and uh, silent auctions. So uh, that will help us to reach more people in, um, in October with Week Without Violence. We also have a program that was actually cre created at this organization called What's Wrong With Different. It's for third graders in school where we teach them about skin to color and, and tone um, in their skin and that's from, you know, from where they, their ancestry grew up and where they started. Um, and it's really just that, it's melatonin, it's a skin color, um, and that the children learn that to, under, to, to understand differences and to not treat people differently because of the color of their skin. Um, and the National YWCA recognized that as a Hallmark program, so we put that out there to other YWs and it's taught throughout the country. So um, that's another thing we do all year long. You know, in the summers we have to kind of take a break, but we just recently, last year, I think we were in 11 uh, schools in Brunswick County for the first time. So not just New Hanover in Brunswick County, but we wanted it in Pender County too uh, this coming year. So um, the YWCA, you know, is um, is doing this work and is pretty much uh, Facebook. We put something out every day. Um, we're we're trying to let folks know um, what's going on and how they can make a difference. And uh, we we will adopt soon. I hope um, is our le legislative agenda. Um, for advocacy and um, once we do that that'll be out there and so we would probably do some meetings and some some rallying around those four um, pieces that are um, important to our local state and, and national communities that's amazing yeah <laughs> good stuff so what is the most exciting part of your job Oh, goodness gracious. Um, it, is, it is exciting every day. It's never boring, I tell people, and most of my staff believe that same thing. Um, I, I think when, when somebody gets it, when somebody, uh, whether it's a management team person or whether it's a teacher or a bus driver, um, they get an injection of YWCA in the heart of the YWCA, which is um, trying to create a culture where everyone is there 
and is it you know is just human and and you know I've had a bus driver who worked with with us a couple of years and and one of the little guys that uh, was in summer camp just uh, said you know you're my brother and he goes yeah you're right and he, and he here's this you know guy who's been working for us for a while he's just a bus driver he thinks and he's like but this child is seeing him as a as a father figure, as somebody that's important in his life, and made him understand that that's his role, and um, and when that happens, and when we and we get it, and people get that we're influencing so many people every day with what we do, and not just as teachers, but as mentors, as as peers, as you know, another teenager, um, mm -hmm. you know, that we can we can really change people and change their mindfulness if we are ourselves mindful of how we're affecting others and so that's that makes it great I mean uh, Friday um, afternoon very late I was 4 30 or so we had a family come uh, and bring us homemade chocolate chip cookies mm -hmm. and the family got out of the van came in and they just wanted to thank us for doing work against racism um, and that's all they were trying to say and so things like that give us an injection of, of inspiration and energy to continue to do the work that we're doing um, and when people do that if they would pay it forward and understand how important that is now they didn't just stop here they went on to police stations and, and did that for the police officers as well so um, but uh, it, it's those moments and there's been so many in the 25 years that I have uh, worked for the YWCA that I can't Possibly, uh, but we're impacting people. You know, we um, even if it's something like teaching somebody to swim. I taught a lady to swim at 67 years old, and um, she was able to recover quickly from hip surgery and hip replacement. And so, and I that that patience and stuff that I took with her at 67 years old to do something she thought she never would do her whole life was so important to her that she mentioned us in her eulogy when she passed away and that how important the YWCA was and then she was doing water exercise with us and so forth. So um, there's just so many stories that, um, that, that are there and it just, it just takes one every so often to keep you on track for the next three or five years. I think Friday will go uh, a long way. Um, and two, last you know, last night went a long way too. That we had volunteer board members here until ten thirty at night, um, and uh, and that's that's just um, speaks to who we are and what we're about, and that um, people are passionate about this work. And um, it, I love coming to work every day. It's a it's a it's a real blessing to get to do what you love. So, for my final question. What tips do you have for females that are also interested in business? Um, I would say uh, stay confident, which is hard for us on occasion. Um, a lot of times women continue to do the same things to themselves um, and uh, be a, can be a bit insecure, but there's a real fine line with confidence and maybe coming across as obtuse or you know conceited or whatever. So it's a real fine line that women walk um, in terms of that confidence. Um, I would say um, you know stay strong and um, be honest above board, um, and 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 confront issues as you see them, and don't let them continue to build or to to bring you down. I think that, um, you know, and surround yourself with people that are like-minded, mm -hmm. that don't drain your energy. Um, we call them negative ninjas here <laughs> <laughs> because they, they sneak in and they take your, your energy and your positive, uh, you know, uh, -ness away. Um, and you don't realize it for a while. So I'd say just stay strong and, and look beyond the standard traditional careers something that we want to start doing working with here at the YW is outside the, the normal tradition of females careers um, we'd love to see more engineers we'd love to see more women in construction uh, we'd love to see uh, more business owners that are women um, lots of those things so I think that um, the reason we don't do things sometimes is we don't think we can and I think that 
uh, females are actually better equipped um, to, to take on just about anything because we're those steel magnolias, you know? We are those, um, those folks that um, hang in there in the hospitals and hang in there with our parents and our, um, in our situations where um, sometimes it's just, it takes more than you think you have and we always end up being okay um, for the most part. And I think that's what the YWCA does. It, it, it helps stretch you in ways that you never thought you possibly could do it. Um, if you didn't think um, you could do this interview well today, um, then what we wanted you to find out is, gosh, that, that went pretty well and I feel pretty good. So I'm now empowered to know that I can take the next step and I can continue to do that. And I think that the YWCA does that. Not, not only with our staff, with our board, with our members, with our children. Um, it's, um, it's just one of those things that, that happens and I, and I love being a part of that um, opportunity. Thank you, those are really good tips. Yeah. You're welcome. So, okay, Gold Diggers, we had a wonderful interview with Ms. Susan Fennell, the CEO of the YWCA Lower Cape Fear, and she gave us some great tips on how to be confident and how to really believe that we can do it. So that means keep gold digging, keep striving, and always go after your passion. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. And I think that she's such a gold digger because she defied all the odds. She's the CEO, the head honcho, so she's really making things happen at YWCA, the lower gate here. So I wanna thank you again for giving us this opportunity to really get these questions answered and see how we can become better gold diggers because you're pretty. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. You did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it was awesome. Good job. Thank you.